Hello and thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, one of the world's most celebrated portrait photographers. He's taken pictures of everyone from President Obama and Lady Gaga, to female bodybuilders and the homeless of Los Angeles. Martin Scholler is here to talk to us about his honest photographs. Martin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, you've taken photos of Angelina, of Brad, of Jack Nicholson, of homeless people on the street in Los Angeles. You've taken regular people in the street, twins, bodybuilders. They all are in the same lighting, taken at the same angle, um, in the same setting with the same camera. No one is retouched. Why this method? I think it came, it started out of necessity work, starting as a photographer and uh, being very broke and having no jobs really to speak of. And then I was giving some subjects and I didn't have a choice of location. I didn't have a choice of what they were wearing. So by just uh, making it all about their face, I felt like I could take a picture that um, suited my, my idea to reduce the person to just what really matters, which is the face. You know, the clothes are just accessories, to, so to speak. OK, well, you're in Paris for an exhibition showing portraits of employees of the brand Pernod Ricard. It's part of the photo festival Paris Photo taking place in Paris this week. Let's take a look at those images. So tell us, employees of Pernod Ricard, world leaders, movie stars, are they all the same, really? I think, you know, we all have this big idea of ourselves that we're so unique and so special. And um, I think oftentimes egos get into people's way. If you really reduce uh, somebody to their essence and just showcase their face and bring out this like a moment of vulnerability, of intimacy, I think we're all much more similar than we like to admit. Okay, well, we spoke to one of the employees um, of Rika, Ari Gang Shalingham. He's Australian and he works in London. And we asked him what it was like working with Martin Schola. Very curious. The thing with Martin that I've learnt a lot is that he's a fantastic listener. He really cares about people. So most of the time you're sitting there and he's photographing, but the whole point is his conversation and what he asked you, what was happening in life, what your goals were, about your past. And I think doing that, he finds different emotions um, that he, he's trying to collect from you. So I think it's all about listening and, and getting that right moment where he thinks this is what sums you up in one photo. I'm really happy. My mum is even more happy. And I've told him that countless times that he's made me look good, finally. A lot of the other people complained. <laughs> Can you sum up someone in one photo? No, I think, uh, I think I'm not a soul catcher. So many people say, oh, photographer, he captures people's soul. I don't think you can sum up one person in one picture in a split second. We're also multifaceted. And uh, I think somebody laughing can just be as honest of a portrait as somebody looking serious. We always associate people looking almost depressed, serious, with a more soulful, more honest picture. But, um, but I think in the spectrum of photography, there's photographs that feel maybe a little bit more closer to what a person is about, and some are just completely set up and empty. So I'm just trying within that realm of photography to stay a little bit more on the honest side, but I would never claim to have captured anybody's soul. It must be impossible to choose your favorite photograph or your favorite subject, but you have um, photographed Bill Clinton mm -hmm. when he was in office, Barack Obama when he was in office several times, and and also Donald Trump just before he was in office. Mm -hmm. How do they compare? 
How do they compare? Well, um, Bill Clinton is just what everybody thought of him, him you know, very um, likable, very outgoing, very warm, um, funny. Um, I had this big camera with me at the White House, this 8 by 10 inch camera, and he comes in, it was all full of energy, and then he had to sit down, wasn't allowed to move. It was for a different setup, not this close-up, uh, not my typical close-up setup. And then I started to see him kind of nod off, I think, because he was just sitting there behind this big box. He started getting really tired and his eyes started closing, so I knew it was time to move on to a different setup. Um, and he was at the end of his uh, presidency, so I talked him into playing golf, which um, I don't think he would have done a couple of months earlier, but at that point he was like, ah, oh, whatever. Um, Barack Obama, I photographed a number of times. Um, I love the man, I think he's great. Um, very likable person. And Trump, I forgot, maybe five, six times over the year, and uh, I can't say the same about him, unfortunately. But Okay, yeah. but you would photograph him again? Probably, maybe. We'll see. Okay. Well, one of your projects was on female bodybuilders, um, where the subjects don't look like everyone else, um, even though the photos are the same. Why this project? Uh, a friend of mine took me to a bodybuilding competition and I never was interested in bodybuilding. I thought it was the most uh, uh, ridiculous thing to do with your time. But uh, when I saw these ladies perform, uh, compete, I was uh, just blown away by the question, why would a woman want to do that to themselves? And and what motivates these women? Why do they do it? So I, um, I set up a studio at one of these competitions and started photographing them and became more and more intrigued with it everything that goes on behind the scenes. Um, and on Instagram, you're involved in a project um, with Greater West Hollywood Food Coalition in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, where you take photographs of homeless people. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to be involved in that? Tell us about the project. Um, well, I've been photographing people on the street ever since I started out as a photographer because I didn't have any job, so um, I ran out of friends. They became too annoyed with being photographed, so I ended up setting up a studio on the street. And I kind of went back to that uh, work now a few years ago on this one street corner in, in Hollywood where a friend of mine had started a food coalition 28 years ago. And, um, and first I just thought I'd take some pictures and he can use them on his website for his non-for-profit organization. But then uh, everybody started talking to me and telling me all these stories and I started recording them with my phone. And I uh, thought this would be a great... I never wanted to do social media, and I'm not on Facebook, but then I felt like finally I found something uh, for an Instagram um, post, a uh, different approach to social media than, you know, than photographing myself with famous people and, and bragging about the, the food I'm eating and my great lifestyle. I thought this was a more worthy cause to, to bring attention to the people that we walk by every day and never talk to or don't get to know. And I wanted to talk a bit about your influences. Um, you've influenced by the German photographers Bernard and Hiller Becker, who are known for their legendary um, industrial photographs, and the German portrait photographer August Sander. Mm -hmm. What do you like about their work? Yeah, Benton Hiller Becher, they've taken all these. Uh, I, I once saw a book with water towers, literally 300 water towers, and uh, I was maybe 20 years old, and I was, why? what is so great about these water towers? They're all photographed exactly the same way, and um, it's kind of boring. And it took me many years to realize how genius it is, to, because after I looked at the book, <clears throat> I never saw a water tower in daily life that I didn't notice or didn't uh, take a second glance at. And uh, the idea of photographing everything the same, the same lighting, the same style, and inviting comparison is what led me to my, my close-up portrait series. And August Sander, he, um, he photographed at a time when it wasn't common, when photographers were still very involved with big uh, format cameras. He would go out and photograph homeless people, or, uh, unknown people, um, bakers and carpenters. And um, I like this approach to just like this, like for treating everybody the same and photographing all different people of our time. And France 24 is a news channel, so we've picked some of the photos of the week and the highlights. Um, and I wanted to get your thoughts on them or a word or a sentence about them. We're going to start with um, Katy Perry, who's uh -huh. performing at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. What do you think of this photo? Uh, you see, that's one of the ones that's a little bit more tried, a little bit too. Uh, yeah, not my style of photo, but, um, you know, there's room for many different pictures. She's not very recognizable even, is she? Yeah, it's more about a, a pose than it is about her. 
OK, well, let's move on um, to the next photo, which is... Um, well, it looks like Theresa May, but actually it's the finishing touches to a wax figurine of mm -hmm. Theresa May, which is at Madame Tussauds. What do you mm -hmm. think of this photo? I love it. I think it's very funny because, you know, it takes a moment for you to realise that she's not real. And um, I like these uh, moments that you think, you know, that actually are funny, but they could happen in, in real life. I think it's great. <laughs> I actually thought it was real until I read the blurb underneath it. And my next photo now is of President T Trump and the First Lady. Um, they're on an official visit to China. And here they are at um, China's Forbidden City with mm -hmm. President Xi Jinping and his wife. Mm -hmm. A reaction to that? I think you should stay in China. <laughs> we'd, all be, we'd be all much better off. So <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. OK, um, well, let's move on now um, to the future. Mm -hmm. Now, you've You've done an assignment on twins for National Geographic. You've done wider range of shots, such as a moment between the actors Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. You've made several books. What's your next pro project? Oh, my next project, um, maybe I do another book with my close-up series. My last book was 12 years old, and I'm, you know, I'm constantly working for different magazines. I just finished a project on religious leaders in New York City. Now I'm working on a portfolio for a National Geographic magazine. And, um, yeah, I have a show coming up next year in Rotterdam and uh, tonight a show opening in Paris okay. at A Gallery. OK, well, thank you so much for joining us, Martin. Yeah. And the exhibition Inspiring Action is on at the Paris Photo Festival until the 12th of November at the Grand Palais. And we're going to leave you with some of the other highlights being shown at the festival. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>